So I'd like to take a look here at the experimental probabilities. And um, experimental probability is kind of related to the long run frequency because it's um, similar to just looking at what we what we can observe if we run an experiment. So again, probability generally is defined by a number of successes out of total number of trials here. You can think about that again as the number of what we want over the total possible in terms of writing out the fraction. So as an example here, I've got a spinner shown. You can see here, it's a wheel that you spin around and there's a little arrow. Spin the arrow and it sees what color you stop on. And we spin it around a bunch of times and we keep track of all of the results here shown in the frequency table. So here I've got um, the color that it lands on and the number of times it landed on it. And looking at the table it looks like red was the most popular thing for it to end on followed by a yellow and that the blue and the green were not as frequently happening. Which kind of makes sense because we can see that there's two reds and two yellows but only one green and one blue. So if I want to calculate out my experimental probabilities based on what was observed from an experiment, I need to find the total number of trials first. So that's actually what I'm missing here first. I need to find the total. How many total times was this spun? Well, to do that, we add them up. 3 plus 7 is 10, plus 6 plus 4 gets us to a total of 20 times. So to find the experimental probability, we're dividing the number of the desired outcomes by the total number of trials. So now we know the total was 20. So again, the shorthand P bracket blue, that means the probability of it landing on a blue. Well, how many times did it land on blue? It landed on it three times, so we say three out of 20. The probability of it being a red was seven times that it landed on red, so seven out of 20. And the probability for yellow be six out of 20 which simplifies to 3 out of 10. Probability for green be 4 out of 20, which would simplify to 1 fifth. And the probability of green and blue. Okay, well that's weird. Can I possibly get green and blue at the same time? So this means green and blue at same time. Well, I can't. It cannot land on both green and blue at the same time. So the number of times that would have happened here is zero out of the 20 that we did. So that's just a probability of zero, meaning it's not going to happen. And here I'm asking you for the probability not yellow. That means what's the probability that it did not land on yellow? So out of the 20 times that we spun this thing, how many times did it not land on yellow? So let's add those up. 3 plus 7 is 10 plus 4 is 14. So 14 out of the 20 times it was not on yellow. You can simplify that to 7 over 10. So again with the experimental probabilities, sometimes you need to find out what the total is first looking at the frequency table. And then from there you look at the one you were wanting out of how many times you tried it.